Hey folks, it's Tom at Frugal Prepper. I'm just going to take you on a quick little tour here of the diagnostic tools and electrical repair type tools uh, that I have in my box now. I've added a few things and um, it's a pretty simple collection. I don't have a lot of real expensive stuff, but I managed to diagnose and fix most stuff that I come across. So my first goal is to try to be able to do everything I need to do and then maybe to buy nicer tools, a nicer scope, a nicer scan tool that might help me to do some of those things faster but my first thing is to make sure I try to have the functionality to test what I need to test alright so first I'll just come to the first half of this drawer right, make sure you click that thumbs up button for me eh? All right, so um, pretty much uh, I'll start here. I have my little scope kit. Um, this little scope actually hooks up to my laptop. Um, this is a parallax two-channel scope. Uh, they don't make this anymore. I have a second scope, but I don't have an extra set of probes. Um, it's a real basic scope. It doesn't do any digital storage or playback functionality. I kind of work around that with screen recording software. Uh, basically it has two channels and an external trigger. And then these are the little probes that it comes with, um, which aren't you know anything fantastic. Um, sometimes I need uh, to get a different style probe on this guy. So uh, this scope will only go uh, 20 volt spread at 10 volts max on each peak, a positive and negative. Um, so I have these probes here, just some cheap eBay scope probes that I can use, um, but they come out to a BNC. But these will attenuate to 10X. And then if I need even more attenuation, like for uh, secondary ignition or something like that, um, I have this 20X hand tech attenuator that I can put in line. And so um, what I have are these little BNC things. So I'll hook this end up to my little generic, you know, scope probe here. And then um, I'll take one of these BNC female adapters, hook that up, and then hook up my other scope probe if that's needed. Um, you know, it's just one of those things I can make it work, but. Uh, of course, a Pico would be a lot faster. Uh, but that all that stuff just kind of lives in here when I have to break that out and use it. And so um, I also just have a basic Craftsman digital multimeter. This really suits my needs just fine for everything I need to do. Um, I have a whole assortment of different types of uh, jumper wires and alligator clips. You can't have enough of those. See, I have the, uh, the this is the one that Keith recommended on one of his videos I bought. It's the SG Tool Aid Back Probe Kit. This thing works awesome. It's actually thin enough that on a lot of connectors you can front probe. You just have to be careful you're not spreading the terminals. Um, I have this set of wire piercing probes in here. The other ones are in my car toolbox right now. These work okay, but not great on thinner gauge wire. I just ordered a set of the power probe ones to see if they'll work a little better on thinner gauge wire. Um, I have a different brand in the car, and they don't work well on thinner gauge wires either. Um, I keep some different light bulbs in here to do load testing with these different amperages I don't have them marked all fancy with how many amps they are um, I have a headlight bulb I just hook my alligator clips in the ends for the higher low beam side um, I have a whole bunch of fuses you can buy one of those cheapy little circuit breaker things or one of those circuit breaker things um, or you can just have whole bunch of fuses to change out when you're troubleshooting short. Um, 
It's a throttle position sensor for a GM. Idle air control sensor for a GM. Uh, some different connectors and stuff from stuff I've worked on. Um, I got my Craftsman scan tool. This is the same as the Innova 5100. It's been a pretty decent scan tool. I like it. It's a few things it could do that, I, that it doesn't do. I wish it did, but you know, it's not a bi-directional scan tool. Uh, so I got my soldering iron here for soldering. Let me move you over a little bit here. Okay, so I'm soldering iron. This is just a cheapy little. Uh, how many watts is this guy? This is a 30 watt. I've got higher and lower wattage irons. I have a bunch because I do electronic stuff, but that's why I keep my toolbox for most automotive repair. It's a Radio Shack one. I have just a cheap um, incandescent test light. This is probably the tool I use the most out of any of this. Uh, I have an LED test light that also shows polarity with red and green. Um, LED test lights are very important for specific situations, but I normally don't use them because they don't draw any amperage. But there are situations when you want to see if there's voltage present without pulling the circuit down or without you know putting a load on it. They're handy for that. I also keep an analog meter there sometimes. Uh, in the case of a throttle position sensor, you might want to see how it sweeps if there's any dropouts. A scope does that well. A nice big analog meter will do that as well and it's faster just to grab it and go. You don't want to use that for everything on automotive because um, it actually uh, has impedance where a digital meter does not. So a lot of computer controlled logic circuits and stuff you wouldn't want to use that. Um, I got this other set of probes for that. Um, I have this inductive pickup that I use for doing secondary ignition waveforms. Um, I can hook that, that end up to my scope. It actually is for reading RPMs with this meter, but um, I use them <laughs> these days with my scope to see the secondary ignition waveforms troubleshoot misfires. It works really well for that. It's actually like, it's broke, like it won't stay closed on its own, so you gotta slide that little thing up and then close it and slide that down. It works. Um, got a little cheap Harbor Freight test light. These are handy if you just need to see if you're getting spark on something real quick without pulling the wire. If there's some fire coming down the ignition from the ignition coil. Um, this little guy is just, it goes to a cigarette lighter and a couple alligator clips. Um, I mean, it's actually, uh, <laughs> I use this when I'm changing the battery on something. I don't want to lose all the radio presets and all that. I'll plug this in the cigarette lighter. On older cars, most newer cars, the cigarette lighter gets switched on and off with the ignition and stuff, so I don't use it on those. I need to get one of those ODB2 things that you plug in to store all your settings when you change a battery. I got some liquid electric tape important if you have wire piercing probes you want these um, but I also if I use a butt connector a lot of times I'll go over the edges with some of this to seal it up oh I got a whole assortment of T pins these are really important to have I use those a lot so we'll go up to this next drawer here I'll show you what we got okay so this is mostly, instead of testing, this is what the tools I use to actually do the repairs. So a few other little things in here too. Um, of course I got, you know, the, the good scotch electric tape. That's the 35 red. And that's the white. I've got the green. It's handy if you got to mark some stuff what it is. Have some tape. I'm about out of black of the Super 33. I need to get some more. Um, I got some relays, 
Um, I usually I keep a, a four and a five pin relay handy um, with the holder. Um, I just get these on eBay pretty cheap and like a 10 pack or something. I got more over in the cabinet. Mostly on Chrysler's if you got like a bad relay or something. But anything where you might have a bad connection in the relay box or fuse holder or on the tip them on a Chrysler. Especially tip ohms. I'm not going to tell somebody like, hey, you got to rip that out, replace it, reprogram crap. Like, just, uh, we'll, we'll pull the wires out, bypass that relay and get it working. No, get the fuel pump going on another relay or whatever. My customers are usually very cost sensitive. Uh, I got a wire for something there. Um, we got a hot glue gun. This comes in handy for a lot of stuff. We're doing electrical. Um, I have just these regular Harbor Freight butt connectors. Um, if I use these, I make sure I seal them up good with the liquid electric tape. Um, but I normally use these guys. And these actually, uh, I think I have the box that come in. These are the Sabubi. I don't know. <laughs> I got them on Amazon. These work really well. They have the low temp solder in them and you just stick the wires in there, it melts the solder, heat shrinks it, hit it with the torch and you're good to go. But they're kind of expensive. I got some different sizes of heat shrink and stuff here. Um, I'm, this is not self sealing heat shrink so if I use this I gotta seal it with some liquid electric tape. This is the self sealing uh, 3x shrink tubing. It's got a whole bunch of different sizes in there. keep a label maker um, sometimes I have to say run a wire outside of a harness where it's broke because harness is just too hard to get to or the customers limited on labor and they can't pay me to tear the whole harness apart to find the break uh, at my hourly rate and so I run around if I do that I always put a label on it like this is for AC compressor so if somebody else looks at that wire they know what it's for Uh, we got a set of channel lock side cuts. These are uh, Stanley crumpers. You can get these at Menards for like 11 bucks. These are thicker than the cheapy little crumpers you get at like AutoZone or wherever. They crimp really, really well. The screw cutters work really well. The strippers work really well. These are actually made by Prodol. And they just put the Stanley name on them and they sell them for about half the price of Prodol. If you look at the protos in these, they're the exact same tool. Set RJ45 crimpers. I'm a network engineer. Um, some some just electrical dikes. I also keep uh, all my paint markers. That kind of stuff right in here to mark things. Let's see, uh, magnifying glass. You're getting old and blind like me is good. I've got, uh, I like this Radio Shack silver bearing solder. So before my Radio Shack went out of business, I went and bought like uh, 10 spools of this. And so I'll have enough to last me the rest of my life. It's my favorite solder. Zip ties. I got a little propane torch. I have the soldering iron tip for this tea. For, you know, doing heat shrink and stuff. This is the uh, flux that I use. Um, it's MG Chemicals. It's really good stuff. Um, see glue sticks. Uh, I've got a tip for my soldering gun, which I keep in another box. These I just use if I need to plug off like a purge solenoid connection or something real quick to see if that's the vacuum leak for plugging off vacuum lines. Um, that's pretty much my little collection of electrical repair tools and, and, and diagnostic tools. So, just thought I would share. If you have any questions about any of this, where to get it or what I use it for, feel free to leave it in the comments down below and I will answer, answer you the best I can. And I'll talk to you all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper. Everybody, be happy, be frugal out there.